Okay, welcome to the second in our series of five videos looking at key stats on the UK economy ahead of your 2022 exams. We'll spend a few minutes thinking about some key indicators relating to inflation and the standard of living in the country. Well, inflation, of course, is one of the big stories of the moment. Inflation, having been low for many years, is climbing sharply. It's reached 5.5% already at the turn of the year. And the Bank of England and others, including the IMF, expect inflation to be above 8% by the late spring of 2022. So the rise in inflation is one of the big economic stories. And, of course, the key question, I feel like the key uncertainty, is how much further will the rise in inflation go? Keep in mind there's some big energy bills to be added to the cost of living in April. Uh, the price of wheat globally and the price of other foodstuffs is rising, so too the price of oil. So inflation will increase, but by how much? And then crucially, what will be the impact of that rise in inflation on the labour market? Will this be a semi-permanent increase in inflation or will it be more temporary and transitory? Well, much depends on what happens to wages. Wages on average at the end of 2021 were increasing by 4.3%. Now that is faster than in recent times where they've been hovering around the sort of 2 2.5% level. And of course, in part, that increase in wage inflation shown here in blue is a result of the, uh, the impact of the pandemic and the labour shortages. You see here that the average weekly earnings growth in the UK in blue uh, actually climbed above 8% in, in the spring of 2021. Well, that's partly because of the, the fall in wages the year before fell out of the calculation. So there's always going to be a spike in the growth of wages. Overall, however, they're increasing by just over 4, nearly 5%. Now, that figure is likely to remain fairly high because of labour shortages and also because inflation is going up. So the big question is whether the rise in inflation currently, 5.5%, will that trigger a wage price spiral? Will there be an increase in wage demands across the economy as people try to protect their real incomes? If wages rise in line with prices, then real incomes can stay more or less the same. But if wages lag changes in the cost of living, then real incomes will go down. Now, what about income per capita? So income per capita can be measured uh, across, uh, across uh, the world if you convert into dollars. And uh, the UK's real income per capita dropped to $43,000 in 2020, a large fall, as you can see in this chart, from 2019. Now, of course, that's linked, as we said in the previous video, to a 10% reduction in the level of real GDP. So with a, a given population, that's actually growing fairly slowly, but if real GDP falls by nearly 10%, you would expect to see a fall in real GDP per capita, and that has indeed happened. The key question here is, how long will it take for real GDP per capita to recover to the level it was once at in 2019 and also to the level it might have got to had there not been a pandemic? Per capita incomes in the UK depend on the rate of growth of GDP, the growth of population and, of course, inflation, of the real GDP per capita. What about disposable incomes? Two ways of looking at this, well, we can measure real disposable incomes, but another way of looking at it is the difference between mean and median. Please make sure for your exam that you understand the difference between mean and median measures. So average disposable income, income per head, was £36,000 household income in 2020-21. Uh, that was well above median disposable income, which was just £30,000. And this chart tracks the difference over the last 15 years or so in average or disposable income per household in the UK. And you can see that the mean remains well above that of the median, although the mean in real terms has barely increased in, in recent times. The median's caught up a little bit, but there's still a big gap between the mean and the median. Definitely something to be aware of. And just to finish off this video, I thought I'd show you something about inequality. You can measure it in lots of ways. Uh, you'll probably be familiar with the idea of the Gini coefficient as a measure of income inequality. Well, this, uh, this is a way of uh, tracking uh, the, the gap in uh, household disposable income by decile. So the bottom decile on the left-hand side there is the poorest, represents the poorest 10% of households. 
On average, they had a disposable income of just over 10,000, just under 11,000 pounds per year. The second decile had a disposable income nearly double that. And obviously it goes up as you transcend, as you go from left to right. But look at the top income decile. They had an average disposable income uh, almost twice as high as the previous decile and uh, 12 times higher than the bottom decile. There is, as I'm sure you know, a huge gap in average disposable income per household in the UK as we go from bottom to top decile. Inequality is one of those key topics that can be used in lots of different exam contexts. In our third video, we're going to focus on government finances.